Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. We're in Summerland, British Columbia in the Okanagan Valley and we're just heading west. We're going to go from Summerland and drive up to Peachland and we're going to do a little kind of tour through Summerland here and Peachland we're going to go and follow it basically all along the lake there. So we'll go right through Peachland. not too many back roads in the middle because we'll be running down the highway highway 97 heading along Okanagan Lake it's a one of the nicest drives probably in the province this is um, second weekend in April 2022 had a few days where it was raining and kind of generally cool and wet and that so this is one of one of the first days when it was really nice in, in April. So lots of people are out and about. Driving around convertibles and that. It was still kind of chilly for that, you know, if you had a open top car, but uh, actually, uh, yeah, just nice if you were just walking around, it was short sleeve kind of weather and you could even have shorts on. But as soon as that sun goes down, it cools off still a little bit. Summerland's a pretty neat spot. So we're facing south right now. And, uh, yeah, all the hills around here. And if you live here, you kind of don't really appreciate it as much as when you come and visit. So this is a nice time of year because things are really greening up and that. And there's not a lot of, uh, like tourist traffic and that so the highways well and even town here it's really quiet great time to come come through here and same as in the fall kind of uh, September or even October quite a different different place than it is in the middle of summer and it gets quite warm here as well it looks like a Lamborghini in front of us I wonder if he's got a GoPro on his car taking video too. A couple of roundabouts like this in town. I'm actually pulling a trailer today. So I have to kind of behave myself. Yeah, see there's an MG. The top down. Looks like they're bundled to go skiing or something. Probably the first drive of the year. So this is Highway 97. If you were to make a right here, that's going to head towards Penticton, Oliver, Osoyoos, and then the, the U.S. border. But if you go north this direction, you go to, of course, Peachland, but uh, West Kelowna or West Bank, I don't know what they prefer to call it these days, but it uh, goes straight into Kelowna from there as well, across the lake on a bridge. Lots of orchards and wineries and things like that in the area. It's amazing how much warmer each community as you go down the valley is. So if you go from Vernon to Kelowna, it's noticeable in the winter. And in the spring when things are melting, and then of course Kelowna, to say Summerland, it's uh, it 
it's like a couple of weeks ahead at least and Penticton as you move down the valley the whole things like that it's the same with the fruit so if you have uh, like cherry season it'll be in a Soyuz and it's uh, probably a month or so before it it's uh, cherry season in in Kelowna and Vernon I don't know it's quite a, quite a while so they have these uh, people that travel around and and uh, pick fruit and that as they as the seasons change as they go up the valley so these uh, farmers will pay people to live in these little shacks and stuff and pick for a couple of weeks whatever fruit it is peaches apples nectarines cherries it's one of the nicest things about the Okanagan is the the amount of fruit and produce that's you know better than you can get us at a grocery store so that's Okanagan Lake on the right it's amazing views the whole way along this road it's one of the like I say one of the nicest drives probably in the province and you really couldn't pick a better day and there's like no traffic too so So there's numerous roadside fruit stands and that. And some of them are quite big uh, as you go down the valley. I think there's probably more of them, you know, years ago, but it seemed like every farm had one. But they're like a seasonal business, so be just empty this time of year. So between Summerland and Peachland, there's a uh, provincial campground right on the lake, and it's really popular. Like, um, I don't think you could probably get a spot there unless you're really lucky in the middle of summer, just driving through. Everything is reservations now and that, so uh, you got to kind of be prepared and plan ahead. But it's a nice, really nice spot. And there might be a couple other campgrounds around too, I don't really know. So kind of straight ahead on the other side of the lake is um, there's a little island there it's kind of hard to see but I think I forget the name of it I think it's Rattlesnake Island it seems like every island is named Rattlesnake Island on the Oak, Okanagan Lake and that but uh, I think it's Oak, I think it's uh, Rattlesnake Island but there was a guy who tried to do some kind of a theme park out there and spent thousands and thousands of dollars back I think it was back in the 60s maybe 70s and uh, yeah anyway there's quite a lot of kind of background that looks like it was like taxes and stuff like that, that and zoning that they kind of province kind of messed with them ended up losing everything and I think the guy's still alive lives in Greece I just remember reading something about it but anyway that island is really interesting not a lot of people know it but they uh, they did a bunch of um, commando training in World War II there, British and Canadian commandos. And this was prior to, uh, you know, when they landed in Sicily and 
Italy and that. So they were trying to find terrain that was similar. Just years ago, I remember reading reading something about that, but uh, yeah, it's got quite a history and very few people know that. I think that, did we pass the park here? I think the park is somewhere around here, the campground. Yeah, I think it might have been back there. What's that? No. A couple wineries in that along here, right on the highway. So we're going to steadily kind of go downhill and it's going to be Peachland when we finally get to the bottom of this hill. That's the start of Peachland. And there's, um, I think, some picnic tables and kind of a, maybe even a camping area on the right-hand side, right on the water. Um, it's at least a day-use thing. And it might be a couple of docks or something there, but... Yeah, we see people hanging around there. Kind of really the first day I remember seeing a lot of motorcycles on the road too. A little bit of sunshine, you know, everybody comes out. And it is Sunday, it's a Sunday today. Yeah, so you see on the right there, you can kind of see beach and that. Yeah, you can pull right in here. It's a good place to stop. It sinks up on you if you're not paying attention, so good to know it's coming. And there's the Peachland sign.
one of these houses on the left here. Uh, I can't remember which one. That guy who had that little theme park he tried to start, he had a statue kind of on this fake balcony on, on this house and it was pointing out towards the island. And uh, years after he sold it, probably well into the 90s, that uh, statue was still there on that house. So somebody, I guess, bought it and got rid of it. But I never knew what it was about, so I kind of did some asking around. And anyway, interesting. Yeah, I think he was Greek. I think. I think he moved back to Greece. So up the hill, on the left, there's uh, orchards and stuff up there as well as houses. We're gonna turn off the highway here, a couple minutes, and follow the lake along. Beach Avenue, but uh, if you were to continue on going straight here, that's gonna of course, take you right to Kelowna, and we'll join up with it again at the end here. Uh, we'll just take a little detour. So, if you carry on down there, there's uh, I remember as a kid, there was this big golf ball sign thing for a golf course that's up the hill, and uh, but when I drove down. I stayed on the highway the whole way and and uh, they made that into a peach now so instead of a golf ball it's a, a peach on a golf tee kind of funny I bet a lot of people don't even know it used to be a golf ball so there's lots of places to park along here uh, restaurants uh, little shops all kinds of stuff this is a neat little spot and in the summertime I know they do at least one big car show here so it's a great setting for for a car show it's just they're all lined up all along the the lake here and in a couple of the little parking areas and grassy areas and that too Peach City Cruise, maybe is that right? I don't remember. Anyway, it's a it's a good one to go to. Could pick a better atmosphere. It's actually quite busy down here. Uh, like I say, it was been rainy and cold for a couple of days and I bet you if you came down here the day before this when it was cooler there'd be nobody around but there's a few people walking around this can get kind of gusty here so the winds coming off the lake We're going to follow this all the way along right to the end. Not many people realize how far this actually goes. But it gets quite narrow towards the end of it. More like a kind of a suburban street than it is a road like this with parking. Yeah, so I don't know if this is pay parking along the road here, or I don't see uh, I don't see any of those kiosk things where you have to put money in. 
but it would surprise me if it wasn't it wasn't a paid parking but there's uh you can see benches and picnic tables all the way along here so if you want to be away from the shops and that where it's probably busier keep driving and you'll find a little spot down here should mention the camera hangs off the side of the truck so I'm not really driving over the line just looks like it If you had a little paddle board or kayak or canoe or something, pretty easy just to carry it from your vehicle into the water and yeah, launch, go for a little paddle or something. Yeah, it's just amazing how much beach, beach and access and everything all along here there is. It's, uh, I don't know that probably a lot of people, uh, you know, even just outside the Okanagan, you know, realize how big, big this, uh, this area is along here. Everybody's in such a hurry on the highway all the time. Probably don't even turn down here. And like I say, not many people go this far because it's uh, going to turn into a, just up ahead here, kind of a tight residential kind of area for a couple of blocks and then we're back onto the highway. I don't know if these little docks are private. I, they must be just public because there's no gates or anything on them. Of course, in the summertime, I'd be probably just crazy busy with ski boats and everything else. Jet skis. And I imagine they probably rent them here somewhere, too. Would make sense. All the places along here are looked after really nice and well manicured and stuff. It's even out here you pull over here and where we turn away from the water and start heading up the hill a little bit. I don't know, there might be a little trailer park or campground down there to the right. That street back there. I'm not sure.
so up at the mountain there, I see that light colored line that goes along there. That's the, the connector, the Okanagan uh, connector that goes between, well, I guess, Peachland, I guess. Uh, maybe it's West Kelowna officially and Merritt and eventually down to Vancouver, Lower Mainland. But it joins up with uh, Highway 97 just up ahead here. So like an overpass and that where people cross over. So this will be where we'll end the video. This is Highway 97. If you like this kind of thing, give it a like and subscribe. Always appreciate that. But other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.